Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at part two of the higher 2016 multiple choice section. If you've not already seen part one, I'll link, I'll link it down below and in a card in the corner so you can have a look at that one if you want to as well. This section is going to look at questions 11 to 20 and I just split them into two videos to try and make them a little bit shorter and easier to watch. So we're looking at question 11. Um, the equation for the reduction reaction taking place um, when ethanol reacts with Tollens reagent is what? So if um, Tollens is being used, then we are oxidising the ethanol. So ethanol will become ethanoic acid, but the Tollens itself will be reduced because it's an oxidising agent. The Tollens reagent is the silver mirror test. So when you're using Tollens reagent, you are producing silver and silver is Ag. So your answer here is B. Question 12, the name of the compound with this structure is what? So I would just go about trying to name this. So the longest chain with the functional group is this one here through the middle. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So we're numbering from right to left because this here needs to have the smallest number possible. So it's going to be based on pent. Now we've got all single bonds, so it's pentan. On number two, we have the C double bond O, so that makes this a ketone, so it's pentan 2 on. And on numbers 3 and 4, we have two methyl groups, so that's going to be dimethyl. So let's have a look at the answers and try and match it up. So we have 3, 4 dimethyl pentan 2 on, which is C. Question 13. Uh, we have a reaction here, we've been given some information about it and what's happening. So we are to find out which of these is um, true. I would just take each of these in turn and carry out the calculation that would allow you to work that out. So first of all, to calculate the limiting reagent, you need to work out the moles of calcium hydroxide and the moles of nitric acid that you're using. So if you've got two grams of calcium hydroxide, you're going to divide that by the gram formula mass and get 0 0.02 moles of calcium hydroxide. Nitric acid, you're going to multiply those two together, 0.1 by 0.2, it's going to be 0 0.02. However, you've got a 1 to 2 ratio here, so if you have 0.2 moles of calcium hydroxide, you would need 0 0.0 at calcium carbonate, you would need 0 0.04 moles of the nitric acid. Uh, we've only got 0.2, so this one here is our limiting reagent, so A is out. It says here an excess of 0.1 moles of nitric acid remains at the end of the reaction. Um, that's going to be unlikely, considering we're not even starting with that much nitric acid. And it is also our limiting reagent. So um, this will dictate how much of everything else is produced. It says here... 1.64 grams of calcium nitrate is produced so if we, this is our limiting reagent we will use up all of this we have a 2 to 1 ratio between these two so we must get 0 0.01 moles of the calcium nitrate produced and if we multiply that by the gram formula mass which is 164 then we'll find that we do get 1.64 grams produced and C is our answer finally for the carbon dioxide if you've got 2 moles of nitric acid you get one one mole of carbon dioxide so we had 0 0.02 moles so we'd have 0 0.01 if we multiply that by the 24 then you would find that you actually get 240 centimeters cubed rather than 480. Question 14 the mean bond enthalpy of the CF bond is this here so that's how much energy is needed to break this bond and which of the processes is delta H approximately equal to this? So this is a bond enthalpy question. So remember, you always do breaking minus making and just treat all of the values as being positive. So for all of these reactions here, you're going to have four times the value they give you in the question, which is 448. OK, so for the first one, we're going to have this as our breaking. And then we've got carbon as a solid and um, you would use the graphite value for that one, which is 716 plus two times the fluidine value, which is 159. 
And if you do this minus all of this, then you get 902. For this one here, all you've done is break this up. You haven't made any new bonds. So if you do four times 484, you get 1,936. So B is your answer. If we just have a look at the other two, this one here will be four times 484 minus just the fluorine, because that's the only bonds that you're making. So that one would be 1,618. And the last one is four times 484 minus just the graphite right, at 716. So that one is 1,220. For question 15, this is just purely a knowledge question. You have to know what the definition of an equilibrium is. So in an equilibrium, you start off with your reactants. They move towards being products. At the same time, some of them come back towards being reactants. You reach equilibrium when the rate of uh, production of reactants and products is the same. The concentrations at that point are constant, but not necessarily equal. Okay, So for this answer, you are looking at C as your answer. Question, question 16, which of the following equations represents the enthalpy of combustion of propane? So for an enthalpy of combustion, you need to combust one mole of your substance completely in oxygen. So in general, that means that you're producing CO2 and H2O. So all of these have one mole of propane here, um, and we're looking for completely in oxygen. So we have to have carbon dioxide and water. This one's carbon monoxide, so B is out. We've got carbon dioxide and hydrogen. That can't be the case, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So they are both out, so it has to be A. Question 17, this is another one where you just have to know definitions. So an oxidising agent is something that causes something else to be oxidised. So if it is causing something else to lose electrons, it must be gaining them and therefore it must be getting reduced. And the answer is C. Question 18, during a redox process, an acid solution, chlorate ions are converted into chlorine and you're to find the numbers of H plus and H2O required to balance the equation. And you're looking for them in that order in the answer. So H plus first, then H2O. So it's just really carefully reading the question. So you need to balance this um, redox equation. So you've got two CLs here, but only one here. So you're gonna put a two in front of that one. That means that you now have two times three, which is six oxygen. So we balance that with six waters on this side. And now we have 12 hydrogens to balance. So we put 12 H plus over here. And then if we needed to, we would balance off the electrons. So there's no charge on the right hand side and we have 12 plus minus two, which is 10 plus on this side. So you would need 10 electrons to balance in total. The question is very specific. It wants the number of H plus first, which is 12, and then H2O, which is six. So the answer is D. Question 19, which of the following ions could be used to oxidize iodide ions to iodine? So if you look up in this in your data book on page 12, then you'll find that this equation has been flipped over. That means that this equation is higher up than the other equation that would be used to join it together for redox. So what you're looking for is to find which of these is on the left hand side and lower down than the equation that you've been given. And if you have a look, you will find that it is D. And finally, question 20, we've got a picture here of a titration reaction with iodine and vitamin C um, with some starch, which should be probably quite a familiar reaction for you. And the student is carrying out titration, trying to find out how much vitamin C is in the um, using iodine solution. Which of the following would help them achieve a precise endpoint? So placing a white tile underneath, using the bottom of the meniscus, removing the burette, repeating titrations or carrying out a rough titration. So. Um, if they were to place a white tile underneath the conical flask, then that means that they will see the colour change more accurately, which means that their endpoint will be more precise because they will actually be able to see it happening. So the answer for this one is A. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.